everyone, welcome back to the episode of the Rails API series. In this episode right here, I'm going to be walking you guys through working with uh, JSON Web Token. So what is JSON Web Token? We're going to take it from the start before we even actually integrate it into the authentication process. Uh, so let's talk about what JSON Web Token is. JSON Web Token is a standard for generating um, you know, an, a, a hash uh, of sorts for using for authentication purposes. And it supports many algorithms. Um, and essentially, all it is is we're, we're taking uh, JSON data and then we're encrypting it and turning it into uh, a token that is then passed on to the client. We can then trust this token because the idea is that this token cannot be tampered with. And what I mean by tampered with, well, you know, the client can then change it, modify it, and modify the, the payload data inside. You can't tamper with it. What happens is if you do tamper with it, it becomes invalid. And then your system knows that, hey, this has been tampered with, it's not going to work. So there are certain precautions we do need to take when, we need, when we're working with JSON Web Token. So in the next few episodes, uh, you know, we're going to cover, uh, you know, how to actually use JSON Web Token, um, you know, to authenticate your API endpoint, and what are some of the options you have, what you can do with it. So, you know, all kinds of stuff. So let's start by uh, installing the Geminter app. Uh, so if you're following along with our Rails API series, I have a um, in Codemy in GitHub. You can download the invoiced uh, source code and you'll be able to uh, follow along just fine with what we're doing. All right, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to head over into the code over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a gem, JWT. Uh, you know, if you head over to the JWT website, there are plenty of libraries out there. I'm going to use the most basic one, which is JWT over here. It supports kind of like all the features, you know, all the header, um, you know, extra stuff that we need. It supports everything. So uh, that's what we're going to use this one over here. Uh, so I'm going to install the gem. So I'm going to head over here. Got the gem there. So let's go into the console over here. All right. So let me um, resize the terminal. Let me clear it. All right. So I'm going to go into uh, do bundle. And what this is going to do is going to set up our gem. I'm going to do rails. Let me increase the size of the text. I got some feedback from people that, you know, they want to see uh, increased sized uh, text. So here you go. I think that's enough for you. Should be enough for you guys. All right, to see. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to go into the Rails console. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, show you guys actually how simple it is to use JSON Web Token, the library. So if I do JWT, you'll see that I have the JWT constant because the library is already auto loaded in my Rails app. So I'm going to do a data equals um, example data. So that's my hash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encode uh, this token into a, a hash. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, so I'm not going to use this unsigned. So this is an unsigned token. We're not going to use unsigned. We're going we're gonna to primarily be focusing on HMAC. Um, because HMAC is just so simple. So over here, you can see we have a HMAC secret. So we're going to do a secret equals blah. Uh, so we also have another secret in our Rails app. So if you do Rails dot application dot secrets dot uh, secret key base or Rails dot application dot secrets secret key base. So you can see that Rails actually already has uh, some kind of secret that we can use as a, uh, you know, as, as a secret. When we're encrypting, uh, when we're creating these tokens, um, we need to use a, a something like this. And you know, this is already deployed by default with Rails, uh, we're already using it for a lot of stuff like device uses this thing as a secret key as well. So we can reuse this token. And you know, when you're deploying in production, you'll have some kind of secret in your environment variables. And anyway, we'll talk about all the deployment stuff later. But essentially, secret key base kind of like comes with Rails. It, it's, you know, available in every Rails app. It's kind of like need by default. Like a lot of libraries depend on this secret. And we're going to depend on this secret now too uh, for other purposes. But for now, we're going to use this secret equals blah, right? For for now, for, for this uh, example. And we have data. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate this uh, HMAC key. So I'm going to do JWT dot encode. 
and then we're gonna say um, token uh, data. Then we're gonna use the secret, and we're gonna say hey uh, hs two five six to use uh, the HMAC algorithm. And you can see here we got uh, this token over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this guy over here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in here in this website. So I'm going to head over into jwt.io, jwt.io. And I'm going to paste my token into here. And you can see that, you know, it says the algorithm is HS256. It d detected that, no problems. And, uh, you know, it detected the data that's inside, as you can see here, which means our data is, you know, it's, it's encrypted, but then now we need to check if the signature is, is correct. So how do we do that? Well, you know, it, it, we can verify the signature here. So if I type in the password uh, that we used, uh, so if I head over here, you can see this blah over here. If I type that in, you'll see... So you can see that now the signature is, is, is verified. So basically that's essentially all it is. Um, you know, we generate a token that we can pass back and forth, but it's a token that only our, um, our endpoint can decrypt and look into and verify. Uh, so, you know, if, if I tamper with it, so like, for example, if I try to modify this, we're just going to get an invalid signature right away. And so that's what I mean when it says tamper proof. It means you, can, you cannot modify it. It has to be exactly the way that it was sent out by the server. If you modify it, it's, it becomes invalid right away. Uh, so that should pretty much give you an idea. So essentially what we're going to do is, you know, in order to authenticate this, what we're going to do is when our user signs in, they're going to use email and password in the same way that they're doing before. But What's going to be different is we're going to generate this token for them. We do not need to store this token in the database. So this is the thing about JWTs. You do not need to store it in the database because it already has everything embedded inside. So imagine if we're just, we're not using example data over here and we're using actual real data that's useful. Like for example, data, and we can do something like user ID, and then we can say one. And basically, we're gonna we're gonna send over, you know, kind of like which user this token belongs to. Then we can use something like this, and then we can generate um, a token that corresponds to that JSON data. So now, if I copy this token and I head over here and I paste it, you'll see that we get a user ID one. So what we can do is we can decrypt this, we can decode this token. And then we can retrieve the user ID and then we can load the current user. And that's how we're going to be able to get the current user object in the API endpoint. So th the cool thing is we don't actually need to store anything in the database to keep hold of like, you know, to make sure that it is a session correct or all that stuff. We don't need to worry about any of that stuff in the database. We can, it's optional. You can store the token in the database if you wish to have the option of, you know, uh, you know, expiring the token before uh, it actually expires based on this token. So you can put in expiry data and all that stuff, as you'll see when we start building our token out, um, you know, what can be, what we can do with this token. Uh, so for now, you know, just to give you a brief idea um, and kind of like a primer on JWT and how it works, um, you know, it's very simple. You generate a token using this tool. It already abstracts all the difficult, gnarly stuff away from you. And all you literally have to do is select which kind of algorithm you want to use. You pass it the secret and you pass it the data you want to encrypt. So let's try it again. And this time we're not going to use a simple um, secret anymore. We're going to use the Rails application secret. So jwt.encode data secret. And then actually we're going to do Rails dot application dot secrets dot secret key base and then we're going to say hs 256 and you see that we get this token now so now if i copy that it's going to give me invalid signature that's because we changed signature we're going to use actual u rails secret now uh, this is my development secret so it doesn't have any real important significance if you guys see the token i mean see the secret so that's kind of like the primer um with jwt 
So what we're going to do is we're going to pause the video here. Uh, you know, now that you guys understand how it actually works, we're going to then look deeper into what else we can do with this technology, with this JWT. Um, and you can see, you know, there's a few algorithms we can choose from, but a SHA-256 is already pretty secure, at least for me, uh, for most cases. But if you're going to go insane, then you can go SHA-5112 as well. Um, again, you can take a look at the JWT website and see which one works for you. If you want to be paranoid and you want to be extra secure, SHA-512, uh, SHA go for it. Um, but we're going to stick with 256. It's good enough for us. Um, all right. So, you know, we can also pass in other kinds of data um, in the, in you know, in the header. Um, you know, so, for example, stuff like this, you know, we can pass this in, uh, which is a, a part of the JWT standard. So if you, you head over here, you can pass in the type of the token that you, you want to use. Uh, so, for example, you see all this stuff over here. So EXP uh, stands for expiry date. So our library does support that. So, you know, um, you know how are we going to generate the token and the expiry date? We have to look that up and, and figure it out. But, you know, essentially, we're going to walk you through and how to use all these header options. Um, you know, it's JWT is pretty powerful. Uh, it does have certain things we have to be wary of. We have to be careful about. Um, but, you know, once we... Um, you know, once we understand how it works, we will have no problem working with JWT at all. And it is really, really awesome. So with that, I want to wrap up this episode. This is a free episode. If you want to check out more JWT content, check out our website. Uh, become a member for nine bucks a month and you get access to everything that we have, our, including our back catalog, all the videos, buffet style, as much as you want. Um, and also get access to all of our future content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.